Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at an actual CPA simulation that was released by the AICPA. The AICPA is the organization that administered the CPA exam. So this is the real deal. You're going to look at an actual simulation. What would you would see on the exam day? And this simulation deals with the regulation section. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,600 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lectures. This is a list of all the courses that I covered. And for this session, my impact income tax course will cover this topic specifically. On my website, in addition to my lectures, I have additional resources such as notes, PowerPoint slides, true, false, multiple choice. If you're studying for your CPA exam, 2000 plus CPA questions. So in this session, we're going to look at an actual simulation. Let's go ahead and look at the simulation. So this is what the simulation would look like. Now, the first thing I want you to notice is we're going to go through this simulation step by step. I want you to notice that this simulation covers only one topic and it covers the S corporation. What does that mean? It means that a simulation is no more than asking you the questions in a different format. It's asking you the same thing that's on the multiple choice except in a different format and this simulation it's covered only one topic so simply put the AICPA giving you the simulation to test your knowledge whether you know how C corporation works or not so let's go ahead and try to resolve this problem to see and as I'm going through this problem I will show you that these same questions could be asked in a multiple choice so the simulation is nothing more than a long uh, uh, several multiple choice questions combined together Hopefully you can see my screen. Falcon Inc. is a calendar year S corporation. This is important. It's S corporation owned equally by two shareholders, Jennifer and Marvin. Falcon reports its income and expenses on an accrual method of accounting. Falcon has always been an S corporation and has no debt. Falcon's controller has provided information for the completion of Falcon's year four form 1120S US income tax return for S corporation. So they gave us the information to complete the 1120S. A copy of Falcon's income statement for the year ended December 31st, year four, and additional information related to Falcon and its shareholder can be found in the exhibit above. So there we go. They're giving you the income statement. They're giving you the numbers. Let's take a look at the income statement. So I'm going to have to go ahead and grab the uh, income statement to the, to, the, uh, to the side. So they're giving you an income statement. So they're giving you sales, cost of goods sold, gross profit, salaries and wages, repairs and expenses, scan through them real quick, depreciation expense, charitable contribution, payroll taxes, penalties and fines, business insurance, total expenses, income before other expenses, 445, other income, bank interest income, capital loss on land, total other income and expenses, and net income. The maker's depreciation on our asset was 20000 for year four. We did not purchase any new asset in year four. The capital loss for the sale of the land used in the trade or business to unrelated party, the penalties and fines are for late payments of payroll. Okay, so this is the first exhibit. So it's basically, they simply put an income statement and this is basically maybe a financial income statement. So we're going to keep this on the side for now. You can close it for now or we can close it until we answer the question. And we have additional information. And what are the additional information? I don't think they're going to have to scroll back and forth on the exam day because this is a mock exam. That's why I'm scrolling back and forth. And what we have here is Falcon's accumulated adjustment account, the AAA account, January 1st, 100,000. Total distribution to shareholder during the year, 30,000. It's distributed equally. It means 15,000 each. And Jennifer Sullivan's shareholder tax basis, January 1st, year 4 is 60,000. Marvin's Darby shareholder tax basis, January 1st, year 4 is 75,000. Fair enough. So they're giving you a bunch of information. They're giving you an income statement as well as additional information about this company. So let's see what they're asking us and how would you approach this question. So the first question, which is the cell B2. Falcon's year for ordinary business income to be reported on the form 1120. Simply put, what they're asking us is, do you know how to compute the 1120 income? So I'm going to have to go to the income statement here. Okay. I start with sales and you, you can do too. You could pull your calculator here. Okay. So you're going to have a calculator or you can do this manually. It, it doesn't matter, but you're going to have a calculator. So I'm going to start with sales. My sales is 1.2 million. I'm going to start with sales. That's going to go on the that's going to go on the uh, uh, 1120s minus cost of goods sold. 
half a million. I'm sorry, I, I made a mistake. Uh, let me clear this. 1.2 million. And you want to get used to this calculator before you sit for the exam. Minus half a million, that's 700 of gross income. Do we deduct salaries and wages? Yes, we do. Minus 203. That's equal to 4, 479. Do we deduct repairs and expenses? Sure we do. Those are regular expenses. Minus 10,000. Do we deduct depreciation expense? Yes, we do. But what we are told, depreciation expense was 20,000. Notice down here, it says depreciation expense 20,000. Be careful to deduct 20,000, not deduct the gap depreciation. By telling you makers 20,000 is they, do you understand that makers is 20,000? That's what they're asking you, minus 20,000. So that's the depreciation amount. So if you computed the depreciation correctly, you will notice that everything else will be incorrect, okay? Then payroll taxes, 18,000, that's deducted. Then we deduct, uh, do we deduct penalties and fines? Hopefully you know this, penalties and fines are not deductible. Do you deduct business insurance? Yes, you do, minus 9,000, equal to 440. Do you add bank interest income? No, we don't, this is a separately stated item. Here you need to know what are separately stated items. Oh, by the way, and I skipped charitable contribution of 5,000. I did not deduct this 5,000 here. Why? Because char charitable contribution is separately stated item. Capital loss on sale of land. Capital loss, separately stated item. It's not deducted. Well, I accounted for everything, and it seems as my answer should be 440,000. So this is the answer to the first question. So the first question is 440,000, except... So this is your answer. So basically, what did this question ask you? This question asks you, do you know, do you know what gets deducted on 1120S? And do you know what are separately stated items? So I listed what's deducted and they, they gave you the depreciation. Kind of you, if you don't know that tax depreciation is called makers, then you should not be sitting for the exam. But the point is tax depreciation is makers. Okay, so that's that. Uh, sums of Falcons year four separately stated item of taxable income and deductible expenses to be reported on form 1120S, Schedule K, shareholder pro rata share item. Well, simply put, like two and three. If you don't know how to do three, you're, gonna, you're not going to know how to do, if you don't know how to do three, I'm sorry, if you don't know how to do two, and if you don't know how to answer two, you cannot answer three. Why? Because when you answer two, I told you which, which one are the separately stated item. So notice, what the so here's what I'm trying to tell you. This is the big picture. What is the big picture for the CPA simulation? Multiple choice only ask you one specific thing about 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 uh, about uh, S corporation. In a simulation, the AI CPA, the industry wants to know if you understand everything. The big picture. Does that make sense? Okay, because if two is if two is incorrect, three will be incorrect automatically. If you included anything as separately stated item in your deduction or in your income, then you don't know which one are the separately stated item. I ho I hope you're getting you're, you're you're seeing what I'm trying to say. So my point for all of this is you got to know your things. You cannot answer multiple choice questions, practice multiple multiple choice questions in order to pass the exam. You have to understand all about S corporation and to know all about S corporation. Well. Again, my, on my YouTube channel, I have a whole thing about S Corporation, several lectures and several exercises and several multiple choice that's going to strengthen your your knowledge. So you cannot know it halfway through because if you know it halfway through and notice if we make one mistake, you're going to see if we made a mistake in B2, all the other answers will be incorrect. So that, that so three will be incorrect if we made an answer in, in two. Why? Because if you don't know what are the separately stated items, then you don't know how to add them, how to add the separately stated items. So let's to compute the separately stated item. Remember to clear your tape. That's the first thing you want to know. And what are the separately stated items? We said we had three separately stated items. Charitable contribution, which we did not deduct, which is negative 5,000. So we're going to start with negative 5,000. Remember, this is a negative number because it's an expense. Okay, then penalties and fines. Are penalties and fines separately stated item because we did not deduct them? No, they are still not deductible on a personal level. So penalties and fines are still not deductible. Therefore, we, they're not separately stated item, not deductible. We just let them go. Bank interest income, that $1,000 we did not include. Now we can include plus 1,000. 
with negative 4,000. And we have capital loss that's also separately stated item we did not deduct. Minus 24, 000, minus 20,000, sorry, 20. So the total separately stated items are negative 24,000. 5,000 charitable contribution deduction, 1,000 of interest income, that this goes to the, uh, to the shareholder, and uh, the capital loss of 20,000. Let's go ahead and in input the answer. Okay, it says if an answer is zero, enter zero. Uh, what about if it's negative? Let's see. Um, you have an ask review, so make sure you read the construction. Enter income and gain as positive, and losses and expenses as negative. So I have to enter it as negative. So be careful, negative, 24,000. So remember what the, read the instruction carefully. We're done with this. Once again, I know I'm repeating myself, but if you don't know the separately stated item versus non separately stated item, two and three will be wrong automatically. Falcon's non deductible expense. So which one we could not deduct? Which expense there's nothing we can do about is the fines and penalties. $2,000. Fines and penalties. $2,000. Remember to enter those as negative. Negative $2,000. And that was. That was fines and penalties. We could not deduct. Again, if you don't know this, like if you took the 2000 and you deducted it on, under Falcons, then you're going to get this question wrong. Or if you took this 2000 and you, you, you consider it separately stated, you're going to get this question wrong because you don't know it's non-deductible. Okay. So notice it's all interconnected. Either they're going to know you know something about S corporation or you don't know. Okay. So all five could be wrong if you get, if you, if you make one mistake, that's so far, so far. If you, Actually, all of them will be wrong. You'll see all of them will be wrong if you make one mistake. Now, how would they grade you? That's interesting. I don't know how, you know, how do they grade you because they cannot see your work, but that's, I cannot answer that question because grading you is still a black box, really. Um, Falcons year four accumulated adjustment account balance. So now they want the year end AAA account. And again, if you don't know what AAA account, please go to my website under, under S Corporation. I have one whole lecture just about the AAA account and what is, what is the AAA account. So what is the AAA account? What's the beginning balance of AAA account? We go to additional information. The begin, beginning balance was 100,000. Now you need to know what affects the AAA. Well, net income affects the AAA separately stated items. Penalties and fines, although you cannot deduct them, they affect AAA. Uh, any distribution to shareholders. So we have all of those. So let's go ahead and compute our AAA ending balance. So let's start. Let's look at our calculator here and start to look at the AAA. The beginning AAA, again, make sure to clear your tape before you start. That The beginning AAA, this is for the whole company, is 100000 Then we're going to add to the AAA ordinary income. Ordinary income was computed at 440,000. I'm sure you're st you are starting to see why if you make one mistake, that's it. Your answers will be incorrect. So you will add, you will add 440,000. Then separately stated items, they have expenses. We deduct those negative, negative 24,000. Then we deduct the penalties although we cannot deduct them for tax purposes for the triple a account they're deducted minus two thousand now the distribution also reduced triple a minus thirty thousand equal to four hundred and eighty four thousand therefore the ending triple a the ending triple a is four hundred and eighty four thousand once again if you don't know what the triple a account is please go to my website to my website or to my YouTube to learn about this. Okay. Now the last question is Jennifer Sullivan shareholder tax basis at December 31st. At December 31st. December 1st, Jennifer's basis was 60,000. What's going to happen is this. A Jennifer's basis, it's going to, let's clear the tape. A Jennifer basis, it's going to increase and decrease by certain items. Well, if we have income, it's going to increase the basis. If we have loss, it's going to decrease the basis. Here we have income. If we have Penalties, okay, penalties, they're going to decrease the basis, although they are not deductible, but they will decrease the basis. Um, any distribution will decrease the basis. We had distribution here. So you want to know the items that affect the basis, the items that affect the basis. Starting with her with her basis is uh, $100,000. Now here at this point, if what you, what you want to do is on, on, on a piece of paper, basically, you know, 
um, take 440,000 and hopefully, you know, 50% of 440 is 220. So basically, you will need to start with the beginning balance. The beginning balance is 100,000. I'm sorry, the, her beginning balance is 60,000. Jennifer's beginning balance is 60,000. Beginning basis is 60,000. Then we're going to add half of the income. Half of the income is 220. Hopefully, it'll give you numbers where you can, you don't have to do the computation. So why did I add, why did I add 220, not 440? Because she owns half of the half of the partnership. Then we're going to deduct half of the separately stated item, minus 12,000. That's going to reduce her basis. Then we're going to deduct half of the penalty, which is 1,000, because she get half of it. And we're going to deduct the distribution, half of the distribution, 15,000. So overall, her basis will be 252,000. So as again, as you saw in this exercise, as this exercise clearly show, shows that you need to have a good understanding of S corporation. In other words, on the multiple choice, here's what the CPA is trying to combat. They're trying to combat that you answer some of the questions by mistake correctly. Okay, so on the multiple choice, they can ask you only about one answer. In this question, they would know for sure or they will have the assurance that look, this candidate understand as corporation or this candidate is missing items. So therefore, just by not knowing what separately stated items are, all your answers will be incorrect. All of them, all five of them. Okay. Hopefully this, uh, this, this simulation uh, kind of gave you a different point of view. And that's my, that's my purpose, gave you a different point of view about how to approach your study, how to approach the, uh, the studying for the exam because if someone tells you just answer multiple choice questions and you'll be fine you will not be fine my philosophy was and would always be you have to be prepared and to be prepared you have to understand the information inside out how can I help you in this process well go to my website I have additional resources subscribe and I have many exercises all what we went through is an exercise in a, in a typical college undergraduate textbook this is what it is so if you open an undergraduate textbook, I'm sure all of you were accounting students. Remember the homework? This is basically a homework from an exercise from your chapter. That's all what the simulation is. Don't let the word simulation intimidate you. I'm here to help you. Study hard. Reach out to me. And good luck.